Hello! Ladies and gentlemen, a lot's been going on in the football world. We've got the Champions League, Europa League, and Conference League quarterfinal draws all complete. However, I'm going to wait a bit to talk about all of that once the matches actually get closer, because now... We gotta focus on international football. The Euro qualifier playoffs are coming up very, very soon. Now in a short, I did give you guys my very early predictions, but now I figured that since we're much closer to this actual event, why not give you all my updated thoughts? I'm not sure if I'll be changing a bunch to be honest, but might as well go over all of the teams once again, kind of give a refreshment on how they did in the qualifiers, if there's any updates on each of the national teams going into this now that a lot of time has passed. Once these matches are done, we will finally know every single one of the teams that will be participating in Euro 2024. But yeah, before we get into this prediction video, please drop in your like, subscribe if you're new. I'm going to be releasing a lot more Euro content from here on out. And yeah, as always, let me know your predictions in the comments below. Let's get into it, starting off with Path A. One of the semifinal matches is Poland taking on Estonia and then Wales facing Finland. The heaviest underdog in this path without a doubt is Estonia. If they pull through in this, it would be a miracle. They are the lowest team in the FIFA rankings from UEFA that are still in the race to qualify for the tournament. Sitting at 123rd and in the actual group stage of the Euro qualifiers, they got demolished. Last place with zero wins and only one draw to their belt, which was against the other weakest side on paper in this group, Azerbaijan. Now, don't get me wrong, it wasn't going to be an easy fleet against the likes of Belgium, Austria, and Sweden, but still. Definitely a disappointing performance. And although Poland have been massively inconsistent themselves, they actually lost to an even lower ranked nation in the FIFA rankings in the group stage, Moldova. They were never able to beat them, actually. They lost them the first time and drew to them the second. So you know what? Who knows? Maybe we can see another massive upset here. But Poland were really going through a lot in the qualify campaign. Under Santos, it just wasn't working out. No surprises there, obviously. Wasn't good for his final years at Portugal. They've now signed Probiers, who only managed four matches so far for the national team, and some were slightly disappointing, including that draw to Moldova, but he still has been undefeated so far. And there's no denying that on paper, Poland definitely wins this matchup. They have one of the best strikers in the world. Yes, he has slowed down a tad bit, but he's still putting off some insane numbers. Robert Lewandowski. Sometimes he does go missing for the national team, but I think this is a match he can handle. Of course, there's other standout players like Zielinski, Szczesny. Although it's going to be interesting to see how the national team progresses in the goalkeeper department, as Alexa Bulka has also been fantastic in Ligue 1. 14 clean sheets so far this season for Nice. Yeah, I'm sorry, Estonia. I would love to see you guys throw some underdog tail here. Take some inspiration from Moldova. But Poland's looking to be somewhat on track again and definitely the better side on paper. I think it's safe to say that they will make it to the final in this playoff path. I'm saying the match finishes 3-0. But for the other matchup, Finland versus Wales is definitely tougher to call. To be honest, I have been paying more attention to Wales because they were in the same group as Croatia and they heavily scared us in the qualified campaign. They had the advantage against us before going into the final international break and they completely bottled it. So now they are put in this playoff position, but they definitely still have a solid chance to progress. They will be playing this match at home, which is a massive advantage, as Wales actually do have a very solid home record. Armenia did defy that statement back in June, but that's the only match they lost at home in the qualifier campaign, and they were fantastic in the World Cup qualifiers as well at their own home ground. I also think them being able to take advantage of Croatia both times they face them does kind of redeem themselves for that massive loss against Armenia. The attack is still pulling through even without bail. Brennan Johnson and Harry Wilson can definitely be some deadly attackers in this fixture. On their day, this side can defensively lock down teams, maybe slipping some kind of air, but they've been put in this position before in the World Cup qualifiers. They were in the playoffs then as well, where they're able to beat Austria and then Ukraine. So they already have that experience. They know what they're about to go through. Robert Page is definitely a fantastic manager. Of course, the World Cup didn't go as planned, but I have noticed that this country, depending on the side they face, randomly know how to tactically break their opponents down, no matter how much better they are than them on paper. It was an admirable, but at the end, an inconsistent run from them in the previous round of the Euro qualifiers. Finland were also quite inconsistent. Things looked to be going well for them, but then they started to slip towards the second half of the qualified campaign. Losing 3-0 to Slovenia on the seventh match day, followed with a 2-1 defeat to Kazakhstan. It sent them to third place in their group with a four-point gap against Slovenia, who finished second. They still 
at moments really perform wonderfully as a unit. And there are a good few talking points. Of course, their goalkeeper, first of all, Hradecki, has been phenomenal for Bayer Leverkusen. They have still failed to lose a single match in the Bundesliga at the time of this recording. Paul Paulo has been getting decent numbers for Venezia, and although he's playing in the MLS now, there is no denying Timo Puki's greatness. Definitely should watch out for some of their midfield players as well, including Karinen on Sparta Praha, along with Kamara on Leeds. I won't be surprised if I'm wrong, of course. I really think this one is 50-50, but I am going to have Wales advance to that final round, which would be against Poland if all of my predictions are correct. I think it will finish 2-1, and that one is extremely tricky to call. Poland have really been in disappointing form, yes, but that was some time ago. And like I said, under their new manager, they have been undefeated. Oh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, I'm sorry, but whoever does win this match does go into Group D with France, Netherlands, and Austria. So it's already going to look a bit doubtful for either of these countries to advance to the Euros. I mean, for sure, anything's possible, it's football, but... Those are three really strong sides. I do believe that this match would be played in Wales. So again, that solid home record, it might be tough for Poland to combat. I really could see this match finishing in a draw, going to penalties, and Wales being victorious on their own home ground. Very, very tough one to pick. If you're gonna base it off of form in the Euro qualifiers, I think Wales would be the right answer, but Poland could definitely come back, but I'm sticking with Wales. I said this in my previous prediction as well. Definitely the path I am most unsure about though. I think path B and C might be easier to predict, but again, who knows what will happen. But let's move on to those, starting off with path B, of course. We have Bosnia, Ukraine, Israel, and Iceland. Now, I am 100% rooting for Bosnia to advance in this path. However, they have just been the most disappointing side in the Euro qualifiers, in my opinion. Second to last in their group, only above Liechtenstein. Not an easy group, but definitely a favorable draw for them with all things considered. Their defeats weren't light either. Of course, 5-0 versus Portugal was not the most surprising result, but 4-1 to Luxembourg? Come on. Of course, they were missing one of their best defenders, Ahmed Hojic, for over half of that qualified campaign. Despite him being on one of the weakest Premier League clubs this season, he's still one of the best things about Sheffield United and the Bosnia national team. Of course, they've got one of the most underrated strikers of all time, Aiden Dzeko, who's still balling out at his age at Fenerbahce. But he was still captaining for this side in many of their defeats, and the only goal he was able to score in the qualified campaign was against Liechtenstein. Sacking Ivalo Petta from the beginning was a terrible idea, but Ukaji Begic definitely brought this team down. His sacking was needed. But Milosevic's rival has not been brilliant itself, still conceding way too many goals, including those two matches I brought up earlier. Bosnia need to thank Ivalo Petta for putting them in this position in the first place to still have a playoff opportunity. But they're coming up against one of the possible toughest opponents, I think, in this playoff run, Ukraine. Unlike Bosnia, Ukraine were put in a very tough group. It wasn't gonna be easy to get first or second in a group with Italy and England, yet they almost did. In fact, their last match against Italy, it did finish in a nil-nil draw, where many argued that they were supposed to be awarded a penalty in the 90th minute. The stats at the end were so close, they shared points with second place Italy. So it really was down to the wire in that match. We could have potentially be seeing Italy in this playoff path themselves, and we all know that probably would have not ended well, but you Ukraine are solid warriors and they have been proving their worth in football for sure. Lots of informed players including Dovbik, Tsigankov. Mudrik might be easy to meme, but he still pulls his weight for the national team. Zinchenko to me is still one of their best players. This side has too much quality at the moment for me to think that they're gonna fall to Bosnia. Even if they're playing this match away, Ukraine to me 100% should be victorious. Please Bosnia, prove me wrong. I would love to see it, trust me, but I think Ukraine's gonna win this match 2-0. Moving on to that other one though, Israel versus Iceland. It's an interesting one as these sides were in the same Nations League group not too long ago. Israel were able to top the group, but both times they faced one another, it finished in a 2-2 draw. Of course, Iceland have that incredible Euro legacy nobody's gonna forget from 2016, but very different squad now, of course, and I think they have fallen off a tad bit. Although recent history suggests that, you know, anything's possible against Israel. In fact, they've been inconsistent in the Euro qualifiers. They finished third place in their group. To be fair, only two points behind second place Switzerland, but Switzerland were underwhelming themselves. I think anything's possible here, but Israel do possess more talent that can potentially flourish in this fixture in particular. Oscar Gloke being one of the biggest examples, obviously. Even without Solomon, I think they can pull through in the attack with the likes of Abada and even the veteran Zahavi. Who knows, maybe I should have learned my lesson from Euro 2016 to just not rule out Iceland in anything Euro related. I'm saying Israel win this match 2-1, 
to play against Ukraine, which would be honestly a crazy matchup. But I think it ends here for Israel. Ukraine have definitely been proving to be the more consistent side these days. Of course, anything's possible, but I am saying Ukraine are able to get a solid 2-0 victory against Israel in this final matchup. And they would advance to the Euro tournament where they would be placed in Group E, which I don't think any of those teams would be happy about. I think they would definitely rather have one of the other sides in their group. I think Ukraine definitely have what it takes to cause way more damage than the others, but we shall see. And the final playoff path, we're looking at Path C. Georgia versus Luxembourg and Greece versus Kazakhstan. Personally, I would be happy for any of these teams to advance to the tournament. Georgia, Luxembourg, and Kazakhstan would all be debutants for the tournament. And Greece were obviously already Euro winners back in 2004, but they would be such a great addition to Group F. Come on, who doesn't want to see that match against Turkey? I think both these matches in the semifinals are quite tough to predict, actually. Georgia versus Luxembourg is definitely more even than it seems. Georgia were put in a very difficult Euro qualifier group with Spain, Norway, Scotland, but they're here because of their Nations League success. Their star player, Kvica Kvaratskhelia, definitely is not as electric as he was last year, but he's still proving his class and still is getting some solid numbers. I think part of it is just the situation Napoli are in right now. But not just him, of course, they got some other brilliant underrated players everywhere, but so do Luxembourg, and they've been playing wonderfully as a unit. Their qualifier group was not as difficult as Georgia's, I would say, but they still heavily impressed against the likes of Bosnia, which I already mentioned they beat them 4-1. Other solid results like defeating Iceland 3-1. The only drawback I have from this side is that they faced the heaviest defeats against Portugal out of any of the teams in this group. Nine goals conceded in one of the matches as well. The other one, they only conceded six. I say only. Regardless, they still finished third in this group by quite a point gap compared to fourth place Iceland, while Georgia finished fourth with eight points. But again, I think their group was tougher, and they still were able to grab a point against Norway and Scotland at one point. Luxembourg, this country have never qualified for the World Cup or the Euros, yet they've had the most attempts out of any nation that hasn't qualified. And unfortunately, I do not think that's changing. I'm going to say that Georgia do advance in this fixture, but it's going to be close. I'm going for a 2-1 victory. And then Greece versus Kazakhstan. I think most people are favoring Greece to advance here, but I really don't want to count out Kazakhstan. They have been such a surprise package in the group stage of the Euro qualifiers with a phenomenal start, beating the likes of Denmark at one point. I know they finished fourth place at the end, but it doesn't give them credit for how amazing they've been. The whole time that Euro qualifier campaign, those top four teams were going neck and neck with one another. They shared points with third place Finland and were four points behind second and first place Denmark and Slovenia. The rise of this nation has truly been sensational in football because they never really were considered a footballing nation. And here they are being able to defeat some top teams. So Greece definitely cannot get too cocky in this fixture. Sure, they are the better side on paper. Sure, history suggests that they will be the ones to advance. But counting out Kazakhstan these days simply would be a mistake. That being said, I think Greece's Euro qualify campaign has been a bit ignored. They have been playing well. They were just put in that very difficult group. It was going to be such a tough fleet to top France and the Netherlands. They still defeated Ireland both times they faced them. Drew with France at one point, 2-2. And when they lost to them, it was only decided by an Mbappe penalty. Netherlands as well. One of their matches was decided by a late Virgil van Dijk penalty. So I think Greece are on the rise again. Of course, they've been halted quite a bit throughout recent years. Nothing will compete to that 2004 victory, but I do think the fans should be hopeful for their country going forward. Palvidis with insane numbers in the Eredivisie. 22 goals in 25 matches so far. Tamika's had a solid run for Liverpool this season when Robertson was injured until he got injured himself, but he should be fit for this qualifier playoff campaign. Their captain Bacacetas is sensational to watch. They'd be loving their wonder kid Constantelius as well. I mean, he did score a goal in their friendly against New Zealand. I would love to see Kazakhstan continue to tell this incredible tale, I'll be honest. They also did wonderfully in the Nations League. I think that's when it really all started, but obviously more more eyes were on them in the Euro qualifiers. As long as Greece don't underestimate Kazakhstan though, I think they have what it takes. They also have a very solid defensive unit with the likes of Mavropanos. I think that they will win this match 3-1. And then for that final match against Georgia, I am saying that Serbia are the only Euro debutants because Greece will be advancing themselves. I think they have what it takes to get a 2-0 victory, but best of luck to Georgia. But regardless guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now that we're closer to these matches, what do you think is going to happen and who will be advancing to the Euro tournament this summer in Germany? Like I said, I do plan on uploading a lot more videos related to this tournament, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Hit the like button as well, and I will see you all very, very soon. Take care. Lock and